Hey guys, on this week's episode of the ADCs of Wrestling, we talk a whole bunch of fast lane fallout, including the crazy attack on Shane McMahon at the hands of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Braun Strowman's going to win the tag titles all by himself, seemingly. Plus, The Undertaker is challenged once again by John Cena. It's going to be one hell of a... ADC! Hey, oh, hey. ADC! Hey. Hey, it's Braun Strowman. You don't have to introduce yourself. You're a mountain of a man. I'm very scared of you. Yeah, I hope you like my shout-out on Raw. Was that, that was really a shout-out? From you? Yeah, you know, I came out and I was like, let's go! Ever since you made that podcast, I've been subscribing to you! Well, you he heard him, he said, let's go! Let's go! Oh, hell yeah! Are you ready for the show with questionable wrestling impressions by a guy I know? It's got a few. ADC! Yeah, big ADC. Let me take you something, ADC. This is wrestling. This is awesome, Michael. Do you know your ADCs? The ADCs of wrestling. Welcome to the ADCs of wrestling. I am Andrew David Cox, the man of a thousand four voices, Canada's greatest export, ADC. Yes, that's right. We are back in my place. It is week four of the show, and I am joined once again by ADC's favorite yes man. Matty, Matt the Mark, how you doing, Matty? I take offense to that. I am nobody's <laughs> yes man. Well, that's not what they're saying on Twitter, my friend. Or yeah. one guy. Yeah, I saw One it. guy. I saw it. Uh, no real announcements this week. Just uh, as per usual, please go to iTunes, subscribe, rate five stars. We need your help over there. Be a love, loyal soldier in the Great Wall. We need your help. <laughs> And uh, as always, check me out on Something to Wrestle with Bruce Pritchard tomorrow at the very end of the show. If you can make it to the, th the end of the three and a half hours, the four hours, there's a little uh, little Easter egg there for you. A little gem. It's a good one. It's a good one, I think. <laughs> I think people would be surprised. The voice I've never really tried before. So. I like it. Yeah. Tr uh, check, check that one out. So <laughs> last week we read some listener tweets. I thought it was kind of funny. I think we should probably do it again. Um, I have a few more tweets this week than uh, I was going to read, but next week we're going to start a segment. We're going to call it Just Two Tweets. Hey, yo, this is Just Two Tweets. I Get like it? it. Yeah. That's actually pretty good. You didn't tell me that. I think I did. You did. Yeah. <laughs> I, t I you did. Added tell you added the that. voice, though. So now it's. You added the razor, which yeah, you see? didn't do through. This is text. like survey says yeah. only these two tweets didn't suck. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to read these two tweets, bro. Do it. So, anyway, uh, we got a couple tweets this week. This is from uh, our buddy Scott Debusher. I think I said that right. Debusher. Uh, he says, Hey, ADCs of Wrestling and Matt the Markiest. Hey, shout out. Inclusive. Love it. I have two questions for podcast. The podcast, I think. Uh, what do you think of everyone having a nickname? I.e. Kingslayer, the Demon. Do you think they go too far with having them? And other than that, what is your favorite wrestling uh, first favorite and worst entrances by wrestlers? He asked. Okay, so yeah, let's do the first one here. Sure. Um, yeah, the nickname thing is a little too much. Uh, the Kingslayer is terrible. I mean, it uh, made sense last year, but why is it? Why is he still the Kingslayer? I don't know. What's an architect? He built the yeah. building of the shield. I mean, I don't know. I. It's a little too much. The branding is a little heavy-handed. Um, they've done it recently, too, with somebody else, and I can't think of it right now, but well, you know, it's maybe funny. everyone. It's funny because they've gone the way of taking the two names away from people as well, right? Where they're they're removing the last name and just going with one right. name. Now so everybody's just Cesaro, Elias, Apollo. Yeah. So it's, um, I don't know. It's a little weird. It's, it's okay for, I think, certain folks to have it if it makes sense to whatever's happening, but to still call him the Kingslayer a year after... He quote unquote slayed the king. I, right. Yeah, whatever. A little much, but I just hate when they, you know, shoehorn it into normal conversation. <laughs> yeah. They'd be like, Oh, and what a fantastic maneuver by the man Gravity Forgot Neville. Yeah. It's it's a little much, but I mean I guess it's I don't know, does it work for some people maybe? And that's why they keep doing it. It's just branding. Gives them more it's to branding. put on shirts. They did it with I guess. Sting. I remember Sting's was a little too much for me. I don't know. Um as far as my favorite, or what was it? Favorite entrance, worst Favorite entrance? and worst entrances. Well, yeah. the favorite thing, I don't know, there's a lot. A yeah. lot of guys have cool entrances. Obviously, Taker's still doing it. Yeah. Um, new guys with good entrances. Balor's entrance is good. It's a little too long. Shinsuke's entrance is good. Also a little too long. I, I, the worst thing for me, other than people with an actual bad entrance, is the over-choreographed entrances. Because yeah. back in the day, guys would kind of freestyle it a little bit. They yep. would feel the crowd. They would do what they want. And really, the only guy that still does that now is... Maybe Nakamura. Yeah, but it's still maybe it's John the same Cena. Thing, everybody, though. everybody really just hits their beats now. 
Yeah, it's the same thing though, right? Like, so even Nakamura, quote unquote, freestyling, he comes out and he does the same thing every time. Yeah, so it's pretty predictable. Maybe sometimes he doesn't offbeat, but maybe that's just because he has no rhythm. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> or maybe you can't hear. I, it's for worst entrance though. I think, and uh, guess what? I'm going to agree probably with Uh-oh. you, but Dolph Ziggler. Oh yeah, well I mean, that's terrible. They need to fix that. That's absolutely the worst. <laughs> we should talk about that for twenty minutes today. <laughs> well, let's not talk about it at all. Okay, that's fine. Let's not talk about it at all. Yeah. Uh, here's a here's some shade thrown your way that yeah. we brought up. Not really shade. But he said three episodes in. This is Kevin McBride, by the way. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, three episodes in, and I'm enjoying ADCs of wrestling. Oh, that's nice. Love the impressions <laughs> and the parody songs. Oh, good. That's good. Only advice would be to turn your co-host heel. He just agrees with everything you say. Hashtag ADC Yes Man. The leader of the ADC Yes Movement. I Matt the Mark. I am my own man. I don't agree with anyone unless that is my own opinion. I will turn heel when I am damn ready to turn heel. Don't force it, Maddie. Don't force it. No, but you know what? It's uh, I, I tweeted back at him, called him a jerk and all those angry... I no, didn't, you didn't. I didn't do that. No, I just... I think... It, it's just it's that time of year where everything's just so darn predictable. So I don't know. Sorry that we don't worry. You're an idiot. You're the worst on Twitter. We'll disagree Ugh. with you on Twitter. It's like it's like your dad finally figured out how to use the Twitter <laughs> machine and he's running wild. What you gonna do, Twitter? Yeah, I'm running wild on you with tweets and lots and lots of exclamation marks. <laughs> I like I like to get my point across. <laughs> so I want you to know how serious I am about whatever it is I typed incorrectly. Let me tell you something, Tweet Machine. <laughs> I'm going to spell the shit out of some words, and then I'm going to ruin the shit out of some words. What you going to do? Yeah. I think that might be the first Hulk Hogan appearance on the show. Oh, God, it might be. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I also haven't really done any Macho Man yet, but that, that'll happen. A little bit. I Give think you've done a little bit. Uh, this one, uh, we're going to talk about this later. Michael L. Brooks, apologies, but uh, I'm not going to touch on the Moolah thing yet. We will. Mm. Uh, mm, same mm, with mm. you, Ramador. Um there was one other question I wanted to ask. Nice. Ah, yes. Eddie Kok- uh, Kokosinski asked, how excited was Basement Stone Cold on Sunday during the conclusion <laughs> to the Usos and New Day match? Well, should we ask him? <laughs> Might as well. He's the only one that can answer it. Hey, be- Steve! Oh, hey, shit, what? Steve, I think I think it might be on the can or something. Steve! Oh, hey, what? I'm trying to do my thing. What's your thing? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, that's suspect. But why don't you get up here? I want to ask you about the Usos and the Bludgeon Brothers. What? I want to ask you about the Usos and the Bludgeon Brothers. Oh, hell yeah, the Bludgeon Brothers. They use their hammer. They finally get the fuck out of the way. Hey, <laughs> goddamn. The Bludgeon Brothers finally used their hammers. They came in like a wrecking ball. They came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> oh, shit. I was losing my shit. I popped me like crazy. Goddamn, I was ready to grab some son bitches, drop them on their chin, on their stack of dimes, they call a neck, straight up kick them in the gut, give them the stone cold stutter, flip them off, and <laughs> peace out, grab a couple beers, pour them all over my face, and that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. I fucking love the Bludgeon Brothers. Bludgeon Brothers. Bludgeon Brothers. Okay. <laughs> well, I think we know how Steve felt. <laughs> About the Bludgeon Brothers. Uh, perhaps that could take us into our fast lane wrap up. Um. I just, I don't. I mean, it's one thing to sit and listen to it and hear it like through your phone, wherever you're listening, but to sit and watch that, man, I just. I don't. I don't understand. We might need to make this a video podcast someday. We might have to, man. Um, people got to see you do this crap. It's you, I mean, people have to see Steve. He's very animated. Uh, yes. I mean, people need to, because they need to know he's here and real. Yeah. Yeah. It's all Steve. Oh, my God. You can't predict Steve Austin, especially need- not when he's down in his luck and living in uh, the basement <laughs> of a semi-detached home in, you know, the greater Ontario, uh, Toronto oh, area. Oh, God. I don't even know where we're going from here. <laughs> Uh, I guess if you just want a bare uh, outline of the show, now we're going to okay. talk about Fastlane. Sure. Uh, a little bit of SmackDown, and then we're going to go into uh, Raw because there was a pretty big, pretty big angle on Raw involving our old friend John Cena yep. and uh, friend of the show, the quote unquote Undertaker. Yeah. Uh, might be stopping by, so stick around for that, guys. Because, uh, well, if you enjoyed what just happened, you'll probably enjoy this as well. <laughs> I'm intrigued to see what his response will be for sure. Yes. So Fastlane. Was there? It yeah, happened. It happened. It was a thing. It uh, wasn't as bad as I expected. That's good. That's I mean, good. everything was 
there was only one thing that didn't happen that we basically predicted, but um, I it was an enjoyable show for me. I actually didn't feel like I needed to fast forward through anything. You didn't have to fast forward through fast lane. No, I. <laughs> I mean, maybe there was one match, but I don't want to single them out. So yeah, well, we didn't even have to talk about all of them. The only prediction yeah. we got wrong was the Randy Orton thing, which was which great. Is fine. Yeah, I thought I actually thought that was exciting. I'm glad. You know, the SmackDown brand gave us something to kind of care about and then took it away from us on Tuesday. But I, I actually like that they gave it to him rather than doing it at WrestleMania. Um, maybe get it over and done with because I'm not sure what his schedule is actually going to look like beyond WM34. But I, I enjoyed Fastlane. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it was it was fine. Um, I think my favorite match on the card obviously was the main event. It was kind of a one match card. Um you know, we had the emergence of all this crazy stuff with KO, Zane, Shane. Um, we already talked about the Bludgeon Brothers interfering, but uh, that was a fantastic. That was my favorite spot. part of the entire. It has to be. Like, I mean, the main event was good, but again, it was predictable. And the only part that really was, you know, that much exciting about that main event was the KO, Sammy, Shane stuff. Everything else kind of went exactly as expected. Yeah, and we'll, uh, well, I think we'll talk about that more because yeah. we're going to verge into our SmackDown discussion in a little yeah. bit. Um, the Bludgeon Brothers thing, I thought at first, if you saw my tweet, I was a little disappointed that the match had ended. I disagreed with yeah, you. Yeah, see, there you go. On you disagreed. Twitter. Matt was everyone like, to no, see. Yeah. no. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, I watched it again the next day. Uh, when I wasn't paying so much attention to my Twitter and, yeah. and then looked up and saw that the match was ending. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think that they did some really cool stuff. They did really one of the only things they could do to try to keep it fresh when they had wrestled so many times. And, and that was, you know, switching up move sets, doing each other's stuff, do, yeah. doing each other's finishers, which was really cool. And um, they were on to obviously something. And now I think it's really cool what they did on SmackDown where they had the Bludgeon Brothers take on yeah. the remnants yeah. of those two tag teams. I thought that was really kind of creative booking. And it showed, you know, they, they'd they already sown the seeds a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago after Hell in a Cell and stuff of them respecting each other and yep. being friends. And it was kind of a friendly challenge. So, I don't know. I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, I loved the beatdown. Like, it was a proper beatdown. And they... It didn't. It wasn't just like they came out and they knocked him over and then they left. They beat the crap out of him. That power bomb that Xavier took on the stairs actually scared the oh crap God. out of me. When they lifted the him up, I was like, was "He gross. needs to get out of this. Like, there's he can't be slammed on the stairs like that." And sure enough, he was, and his neck snapped. And I don't know how actually injured he is. This could be my mark coming out, but <laughs> well, obviously that was the plan for him to get injured there. I think so, but I do. I have to disagree with you on the doing each other's finishers, I don't like that because they just kick out of it immediately. How strong is your finisher if you can just kick out of it yourself? Well, see, the the point is that they don't do it as well as the other guy. They haven't mastered the maneuver. I get it, but it looks exactly the same, and it just, I don't like it. To me, it just makes it seem like meh. All right, well, you're meh. Great, you you hit a splash, Kofi. Good job. He kicked out immediately. Are you... Are you kayfabing me now? Are you trying to go heal on me because of what that guy said? No, I just, I don't, I tweeted it at the time. It are. just makes it seem like the moves are. aren't, okay. I think you are, you fucking uh, Mark. Yeah. I think you are, you stupid Mark. Anyways, it you was a proper beatdown. I loved it. I hate the Bludgeon Brothers theme and all that crap. I think they would have been better as rednecks. You don't like the theme? No, because it's... Steve likes the theme. Uh, Steve loves it, and <laughs> I have to disagree with Steve, but it's just, I don't know, it's kind of a carbon copy of what they were doing with Bray in the background. Just now they're wearing red instead of dirty stuff. It would have been great if they came out and they were still carrying hammers. I don't care, but be oh, red they used the hammers. Them. That's the biggest Which they point finally the did. Thing. Yeah, they did they finally use the, use the hammers, which was great because I, I I was sure they were styrofoam. So it's good to see that a they lot actually of people made were. some noise. A lot of people were. <laughs> yeah. They actually have some weight. I'm guessing that they're rubber, like heavy rubber. Maybe. I, I would assume so. Okay, so moving on. What else happened at Fastlane that was awesome? Uh, I thought Rusev looked really great versus Nakamura. Uh, pretty damn predictable, but um, he looked really good, and he looked good on SmackDown, too, against AJ Styles, as you know, you think that he would. Yep. Um, that spot where he Machka kicked Shinsuke Nakamura, <laughs> and he took a complete spill for him, that was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty stiff kick. It was... 
it, he can act pretty hard on that job. Matska kick, man. Yeah. It was pretty Every stiff. Matska kick is stiff kick. Yeah. Matska. <laughs> and, and Shinsuke sold the crap out of it. Again, we love Rusev. We know that he's just being fed to these two right now as they lead up to WrestleMania. And he looked great, but should should Nakamura, who is you know the headliner of WrestleMania, be getting almost beat by someone? I think almost doesn't matter anymore in WWE. No, it, it really doesn't. They're just out there to put on a good show. And um, I thought it was nice to it give was this good much match. to Rusev. I, loved I really, it. I really thought it was nice to give this much to the guy because in this day and age, when Rusev and, and they they were treating him like a real heel as well, yeah, which is different because I feel like some of the comedy stuff had gotten him over to a point that they weren't comfortable with that in, anymore, and they've kind of put him back to being more like the Bulgarian brute, the the mean kind of character, which is cool. Yeah. I actually really enjoy that. And in my opinion, some of the Rusev Day stuff was starting to run its course. Yeah, this is kind of like what they did with Fashion Police, where everything was funny and then it just wasn't anymore. Right, right. So He's still getting the crowd reaction, though. People love him and want him to succeed. So. I, yeah, yeah, they do. And I think it's kind of a force of habit, too, where people will still just keep chanting Rusev Day, yep. even if it's has nothing to do with anything. Um but I, I, I kind of like the mean streak of Rusev, and I would hope that even if it doesn't mean anything, that they kind of go back to him after WrestleMania for either AJ or Nakamura, unless one of them, you know. I hope so. I unless just, AJ leaves SmackDown or something. I'm, I'm kind of wondering what happens, you know, next week, because now he's lost to both of them. Shinsuke came and defended AJ. and What well, seemed a lot like it was going to set up a tag team match at the end of the show. Well, I, I mean. I pretty much was like, okay, <laughs> tag team player. Yeah. Let's do this. Holla, holla. <laughs> we got AJ Styles. And Shinsky Neck and Mickey versus uh, the bludger guy, the, not the bludger. Who the hell is that? <laughs> the Rusev Dizzies. Let's do this, player. And that's why you're retired. But, yeah, I don't know. I I hope they Not do more with Rusev, big. but I, don't, I guess we're just going to see a couple tag team matches. Maybe we'll see these four just stick together for the next couple weeks. Yeah, they'll work house shows together yeah. until AJ and Nakamura at WrestleMania because they can't be wrestling each other on every house show card and that's yeah. just basically what it is that's what wrestling is um can actually can i just say one thing and maybe it leaks into the smackdown stuff a little bit yeah i'm kind of getting all. annoyed with with i don't know aj just kind of coming out and saying this is what everybody wants to see and this and that and the way they're promoting it i don't i don't know i don't like it very much i kind of want to see them just do the match or build it up something rather than have one guy come out and tell you how you how excited you are about it i'd this this Tuesday, I didn't like his promo very much, and it kind of came. I, I didn't like his promo two weeks ago. I think it was. As yeah, well. you're a big AJ promo hater. I, I he's great at, at doing the promos. I just don't like the script for it. I don't know. It's just like stop coming out and telling me that I'm excited for this match. Like I'm already excited. But for you this are, match. damn it. You're gonna love this match. I, it's gonna be the best. I am, and I'm excited for it. But I feel like I'm getting less excited the more they tell me how excited I'm gonna be. Well, they're obviously gonna ramp it up. This is this was the first show after the go home pay-per-view for WrestleMania yeah. so they're gonna have to do something where AJ and Shinsuke you know either get in each other's faces a little more the intensity gets ramped up and I doubt one of them turns heel but if they did I don't know yeah AJ I don't could see go that heel again AJ was awesome as a heel I missed his heel run a lot yeah uh, he, he was great as a heel, heel but I I think he I've, for whatever reason I think he might be part of the shakeup. Yeah, but I just I don't know. I'm it's the same thing over and over and over and over and over Oscar also appeared on yep. the show yeah, the uh, the sign was pointed at. It was awesome. Who pointed better, Oscar or Rousey? Rousey. No, <laughs> her point was ridiculous. I yeah, wrote a whole song about it. That's why I liked it. Because <laughs> <laughs> she came out, she pointed, she got to the ring, she pointed, she looked at Charlotte, she pointed. I lo- I don't know. It was terrible. It was Before her first. Before she left, yeah. she better point at the sign again. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I want people to forget about the sign. I wasn't sure how they were gonna. Do the Charlotte Oscar thing. Glad they're doing it. Um, I I don't know. Maybe maybe I was. It would have been great if she had interfered in the match, but maybe it just wouldn't have ended that storyline. No, I thought it was fine. Yeah, you know, she's just out there to announce the challenge. Um, I thought it was they good. were a little bit scripted on SmackDown Live. Poor Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, um, is getting a lot of just like rhetoric in these scripts and and metaphors and stuff. It's like, well, I'm the queen and you're the empress and yeah. it's like you could just see that a mile away just Vince being like it's a queen and an empress it's perfect <laughs> write a lot about it it's, write it, nothing but that I mean it's good this is what Smackdown needs for sure um, yeah. so I mean I think we're all excited about the match I, I do find it awesome that two Japanese wrestlers who can't speak English very well are 
the headliners. That's cool. It's which different. Is fantastic. Um, poor Charlotte, though, somehow continually getting her segments interrupted by oh. men involved in the U.S. title picture. Why, Why are they doing this? How did that happen again? <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand. Like, I know maybe there's a time constraint there. It was but Bobby Roode this time. No, it was Randy Orton. It was Randy. Orton. The He's last time it was Bobby. Yeah. In my like, and I was like, oh, what's Randy Orton going to do with this? And then, no, he's he's coming to the ring because he's going to I mean, I don't know. Jinder Did Mahal they go or, to commercial? Or wait, no, he wasn't wrestling gender. I don't even remember what happened on SmackDown. He came out to commentate. Bobby Roode wrestled gender. That yeah. was the, oh, God. Yeah, well, that, that whole thing, I mean, is the U.S. title is boring. Yes. Like, the, it, it was Boring us. <laughs> hey, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Boring us. That should be it. <laughs> that's oh that man. Song. There's your next song. Nah. Um, no, I I don't, I don't know why like they the keep Matt Hardy interu- one. Just like put him heel again, please. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know why they keep inter- interrupting the women, but we might as well just cut that story off now and talk about the U.S. title. No, because we're not. I don't it's want terrible. To. No, I don't care. Moving it's so on. boring. No, I really don't care. It's okay. boring. Okay. Um, cool. KO Shane <laughs> Zane. Yeah, this I want to talk about this, this on SmackDown. Awesome. This was by far the biggest thing that happened because I really want to move on to Raw. Yeah, another um, proper beatdown. Yeah, this was awesome. This was pretty crazy. Yep. Uh, the chair around the neck into the ring post. Ouch. I don't think I've seen that before. Not like that specifically. Anyway, no, I don't think I have either specifically. And then the power bomb on the back and the noise that he made is just uh, really the stuff of nightmares. Yeah, <laughs> it, it actually it's one of those things where like, oh, yeah, he legitimately got the wind knocked out of him because that's what I sound like when I fall down. <laughs> no, I think you're marking out. Uh, <laughs> anyways, he sold it really well. That yep. power bomb in the ring, though, that was a little scary when you land neck first. He's got a fix the way he takes some of these bumps man tone it down shane yeah because it was rough that's two power bombs and two shows that uh scared me a little bit yeah uh that was a uh, a lot of pretty crazy stuff at the end of the show there yeah um like it though like do you like where it's going yeah the wrestlemania announcement obviously that's not the entire story and that's not going to be the match no we had this you know, this little Easter egg, I guess I've said it twice on the show now, but Easter egg um, of Shane showing up in Gorilla on Raw yep. beside Vince McMahon. So there's a lot of rumors that there's a possibility that it's Shane and Vince taking on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. That yeah. seems crazy to me because of Vince's obviously advanced age. Yeah. Um, he did just get, you know, head butted and then bled hard way against Kevin Owens back in October. So yeah. the storyline is there. It would be a spectacle, obviously, for and sure. you would have basically all the McMahons on the card, which is a first for a long time, That's but right. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Um, the other possibility is to have Daniel in the match somehow. Well, from everything that I've kind of looked at and read and even my own thoughts on it, we still, I mean, we still don't know if he can wrestle. There's There hasn't been any leaks about whether he's even tested to be cleared that last sort of i thing. heard he's still not approved by wwe yeah. doctors so best case scenario he's the ref yeah so you do a three-way basically it's a handicap match for shane but then daniel is in there which makes it almost like a double tag because you know he's going to get involved somehow um he's refereed before he but refereed he can in that if match. he's not cleared he can't do anything he can't do much but he can help shane so it kind of Maybe evens the odds away, a bit, that sort of but thing. it's, it's not as fun um, another really cool thing on SmackDown was Serious Big E. I know we already talked about this, but I just thought that his promo, yep, man, these were definite signs of how great he could be if he got a singles push. And maybe after WrestleMania, if they do the shakeup, breaking up the New Day wouldn't be such a bad idea. I, I mean, they're a good tag team, but they're all incredibly talented wrestlers. They can all carry themselves on the mic. Maybe it's time. The only problem is, is who takes over for them. I mean, like the Bludgeon Brothers are there, but... I don't know, but we talked about, like, I talked about this, I think, even in our first episode. I hate the New Day now. Like, I, I'm just, I'm over it, and I get that they're good with kids and that sort of thing, but it's it's too played out now, and the serious Big E we saw two weeks it's ago so good. was amazing, and then we saw it again last night, two nights ago, and uh, that's that's the direction I want to see it. Even, yep. even if they stay together, just make them less of a joke. Oh, singles push! <laughs> <laughs> that's what i want singles push for biggie 
Uh, um, I guess we should probably briefly touch on Carmella. That sounds wrong. Um, she's been showing us a mean streak lately. Yeah, I, I think we're finally going to see a cash in soon. They have until what June? Essentially, yeah. I I don't. Oh, this is crazy. Do they make her the one that beats Oscar? No, not a chance. You don't they think they do so? not end Oscar's streak at WrestleMania with a fucking briefcase cash in? What if she cashes in and then loses? Whatever. But does she cash in at WrestleMania then? I think she might attempt it. I don't know if she does it. If she does, Charlotte will have already lost to Asuka. That's then, assuming that Asuka wins. We're assuming Asuka yeah, wins. Yeah, or, or the match gets disqualified or something happens at that match at WrestleMania for Schmaz, and then Charlotte tries to, or Carmella tries to cash in on Charlotte. Yeah. And then maybe wins, and then Asuka just like decimates her the next night on SmackDown and wins the title off her or something. And then it's, you have Charlotte and Asuka in a rematch. Yeah. Because Charlotte's like, well, that wasn't fair. Blah, and it's some weirdly overscripted promo. Like, I think we can all, we can agree that whether Carmella wins the title or not, she's not going to keep it for long. Probably not. But, oh, is it? Is it? You know, if Big Cass is coming back. Oh, no, they broke up, didn't they? Oh, I don't know. I think it, in real life they Did broke they actually, up. I was going to say oh, I, I would know. put Big Cass with Carmella because she needs a heater again. Yeah, but Big Cass is still a while away, I think. Like, he's he's he got another close. couple months. I, I don't know. It's I think the <laughs> inside, I kind of want just a terrible wrestler to beat Asuka. I don't know why. That's terrible. But the cash-in would be the That's perfect the way to do it. To, but you could protect Asuka saying, well, I was beaten by a cash-in. She wasn't actually beaten by an actual Yeah, but then match. the streak is still over because it's an official match. Sure, but... Once that contract has entered the referee's hands and he rings that bell, that's an official match. They're not afraid to break streaks at WrestleMania. Well, no, they're not, but... <sighs> Carmella? I'd rather that than Rousey. I'd like to see that dude sitting ringside when Carmella beats Asuka at WrestleMania. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we all know that mem meme. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just, that. Maybe that's the mark in me. I would love to see something crazy like that because it I just seems you. so stupid that... That's the worst. You're the worst. It would probably um, get people to lose <clears> their mind. Let's move along to Raw. It's that time! Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about it. Big moment on Raw. Which Another one? big moment on Raw. A couple big moments yeah. on Raw. Raw was good. Raw was very good. Uh, I wanted to talk about Raw first, but I figured since Fastlane just happened, we kind of had him, yeah. him, him, blah, blah, blah. Uh, John Cena. We're going to get to Braun Strowman in a moment. Yeah, because of course. He's going to get these titles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but John Cena came out. He's decided that his way to WrestleMania is as a fan. Yeah. Whatever, John. I do, you know what? I At first, when he came out and he wasn't Mopey John and he was all happy, I was like, ah, crap, this isn't what I wanted, I wanted to, I, I don't know. I think I just had an idea of where it would go. The fan thing was great. My my PVR magically blanked yeah. out so, during the beer session. I'm pretty sure here in Canada, when John went into the crowd and took a sip of beer with uh, his buddy Sasquatch or yeah. whatever he said, I'm pretty sure that we had the feed cut off. Because, yeah, something happened there. Yeah, I didn't know that happened. I was like, oh, where, where'd the feed? And yeah. then he came back into the ring and he's like, it's almost refreshing. Is that sip of beer or whatever? Mm-hmm. So I kind of figure what happened there, but um, I don't. He, he I thought did that, that was weird, pretty good. He, yeah, it was okay. I don't know. He he did that thing where he kind of acted like he's speaking out of turn. Yeah, and he's gonna get in trouble if he says what he. They don't want me to saying say. this in the back. My which, mic's not cutting which off. It's always so hard to believe, but <laughs> but um, I like the way he segment. He like he he moved into the Undertaker's the only one not letting this match happen. I yeah. like that he used that to get to that point. Yeah, and, and he called the Undertaker, you know, an egotistical yeah. or or somebody did and yeah, yeah. So but, that's that's interesting. I guess that gives Taker a reason to stop doing four hundred pound squats in his home gym on his replaced hip and actually wrestle, which how, is impressive. How about the crowd reaction though when Cena called him out for posting on his wife's Instagram? Yeah, I don't get why they thought that was so crazy. I I just I thought it was a great comment. I mean, it's it's fine, but why were people were like, "Ooh, <laughs> he's working out"? What? Well, I think anytime you quote unquote bring the significant other into it, you're talking down on male it's or like, female. You'd be wrestling so. me instead of enjoying your wife's company. <laughs> yeah, you stupid idiot! Like that's- I still liked it though. I and f- it's funny because I don't follow Taker or his wife, so I didn't know any of that. Well, I somewhat follow Taker. Apparently, yeah. um. He, he's wanted to come back on the show for a couple weeks now. Oh, okay, perfect. And uh, again, I have this weird connection. It's going to sound like he's actually right in the room. Weird. Um, but let, let's find out what he, he says. Yeah. 
concerning this second challenge from John Cena. Mr. Mr. Taker, uh, how have you been since your last appearance on our show? Uh, are you all right? I uh, just... I just did a 600-pound squat on my new hip. Wow, that's a very impressive feat. It, uh, it was something. Ow. What the hell's the question? I said, how have you been since your last appearance? Oh, right. And I've actually been playing an awful lot of Candy Crush. I'm trying to beat Kane's score. <laughs> that's that's unexpected. It's very frustrating. What did you ask again? Sorry. Um, I wanted to know your response to John Cena challenging you yet again to a match at WrestleMania. I believe I laid down my terms very clearly two weeks ago. No touching of the hip or face. (laughs) He has to buy me a jacket and hat. Right, of course. Obviously. And no physicality and also no match. Wait, wait. (laughs) What was that last thing? Hold on. Oh, Candy Crush. It's a very popular mobile game. No, I'm not. I feel like you should know this. No, no, no. You said no match. Oh, that, yeah, I'm retired. I can't wrestle, but I accept John Cena's challenge. What? (laughs) What? Wait a minute. So what are you proposing? Let me set the stage. Oh, God. Here we go. The lights dip. Uh, Yes. Kid Rock appears on stage to perform American Badass. Oh, God. God. And I return to do a lap around the ring on my hog (laughs) with John Cena riding, bitch. Well, that's outrageous. (laughs) It would be the WrestleMania moment. My last ride, if you will, ADC. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. Your last ride. It would be awesome. No, I, I get it. What, John would have to wrap his arms around your waist. Is that not physicality? Have you seen John Cena lock in the STF? I think I'll be fine. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Just throwing shade. All right, well, are you going to wrestle John Cena or not? No, I'm retired, maybe. Uh, what does that mean? I, I probably may not. I'm very confused. I highly doubt that I will possibly... Yes and no. <laughs> That's not I what? <laughs> That's not an answer. That's not in the slightest an answer. I have no idea what that means. Before you go, can you give us a let's go Roman? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he's gone. That, that was, was appropriate. Wow. Big evil out, you bish. <laughs> Jeez. Why does he keep calling me you bish? Yeah, well he's well, I mean I guess it's better than the actual word. He's surprisingly hip. And yeah, trendy. he's he's very uh down with the millennials. Yeah. Yeah. WrestleMania is going to be lit, fam. All right, John. And uh, now I'm leaving. Yeah, that was... Uh, well, there you have it. That was Mr. Undertaker himself. I don't like... Quote, unquote, Undertaker. <laughs> when you sit around, what, how does this... How do you come up with this crap? Uh, I don't. Stuff. No, it's not crap. I, I come up with a phone call. I call the Undertaker, yeah. and he's like, yeah, I'll totally... You know, I'll totally come on the show. Oh, okay. So... So it's real then. <laughs> that's, that's what we're telling people. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, they're going to wrestle. Do you think it's going to be the American Badass? Yes. I do too. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. I think it makes total sense. He's yeah. retired the actual Undertaker well, gimmick. And he now, left his hat and his boots and his jacket. And Kid Rock going to the Hall of Fame. He's going to be there. It L- let me fantasy book sense. for a second. Okay. We go into WrestleMania, and this probably won't happen because they like to promote stuff, but we yeah. go into WrestleMania with John Cena still not having an opponent. He's literally in the front row, hanging out with fans, having a good time, leading Aww. chance, doing whatever. Yep. Then Kid Rock comes out to play. He plays a couple shitty songs, and then American Badass uh. starts up, and then he does a breakdown, and he pauses for a second, and you just hear, vroom, vroom, oh, like, yes. what is that? Yes. And okay. then Taker comes out. He does a lap around the ring and he stops right in front of John Cena. He just stands up and Cena stands up. He's like, what the, are we doing this? And then we have a match that was not on the card, unsanctioned, if you will, that just goes down right then and there. Vince, do it. That is amazing. I don't know how you actually do it because Cena would have to sit there. It's not going to happen like that, pal. <laughs> he, would, he would have to sit there the whole time <laughs> for it to not be a dead giveaway. You know why this also <laughs> makes a lot of sense for Taker? But it's so good. The bike prevents him from having to walk down a 400 foot ramp well it, the ramp's not going to be that big it's not in quite as nuts of an arena or no but you remember stadium. last time he literally came up through <laughs> half, the, half the ramp yeah. and then walked down and then still looked tired but no i i think i think we're going to see it it's like having a sweet little go-kart to just ride down to the ring yeah i just yeah. i don't know i think we've talked out we don't want to see it but now i'm actually at a point where i kind of do the which, badass which gimmick sucks. minimizes the mileage on my hip yeah, we get it. Yeah. Then if he is doing as well as everyone says he's doing, who knows? Maybe, I mean, it's not going to be a good match, but it'll be fun to see them 
stand across from each other, I guess. I, I didn't hate the, the American Badass gimmick as much. No, as me either. Did either. I thought it was, you know, it was something different. When he first did it, I think we all wanted the real Undertaker to come back, but yeah. they kept it fresh. I mean, the guy's been around for, what, 25 years, so... Yeah. Obviously, at some point, he needed to change it up a little bit. And <laughs> a little did. bit, So yeah. now's, you know, a good enough time to do a, a curtain call, a last ride. Yep. Now, do you think if he does this, this is it, though? He retires American <sighs> Badass as well? I don't know. I honestly don't know. If he's feeling great, Taker is the kind of guy who will be like, you know, give me a small run out of this. I'll go yeah. through to next year's WrestleMania and we'll figure out an actual career versus career match. Which would be cool. I think so. I don't know. <sighs> it's, it's hard. It's really tough because yeah. he looked so bad last year. Yeah. And if this match is really terrible, then we'll all be looking back and saying, why were we open to this match? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why did this happen? <laughs> why were we excited about this? And yeah, we knew what it was going to be. Yeah. It's going to be terrible. This isn't awesome. Yeah. This is awful. Let's move along. Yeah. Lesnar, no showing awful. again. Amazing. Reigns is suspended. Yeah. I, I actually have a kind of a thought on the rain suspension. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if they're waiting to see what comes out of this so-called movie that's being released or 30 minute documentary that's being released tomorrow that apparently implicates Roman and some other wrestlers doing steroids and that sort of thing. Oh yeah. I, I read something. Didn't they confuse Roman reigns with Luther reigns? Not who sure. Was on the roster like 10 years ago. Not sure. Possibly. But I feel like, I don't know. I feel like they're waiting. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're not concerned about it. But if it does come out and there's like actual evidence of this, he's done. They're not just going to cancel the WrestleMania main event. Uh, main event. That would totally go against their policies. Yeah, I think that they're going to be like, we didn't test him recently. It's not a recent infraction. There's nothing we can do retroactively. Maybe. Yep. He's just going to be there at WrestleMania. It, I mean, I think they you're could. looking too deep into it. It could You're overanalyzing, but it does just seem weird that they would just suspend him. Now well, Vince is kind of tied up in this story now, in yeah. a, a good way or bad way. I think what they're doing is they're playing off the thought that Roman is Vince's boy. They're trying to get it so that the audience is like, "Oh, so it's Brock who's Vince's yeah. boy." You should boo Brock because that's the one that Vince loves, not yeah. Roman. Uh, Roman should know his role and shut his mouth and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I really like that Angle was out there to promote them. <laughs> yeah. Brock's not here. Yeah. But we, we do have Miz TV. <laughs> like lightheartedly, <laughs> like the crowd wasn't going to lose their mind over Don't it. worry, Brock. Brock's not here. We have Miz TV, though. It's yeah. going to be, it's true. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I really like that. I love that Lesnar no showed again. Um, now that Vince is guaranteed that he'll be there next week. You got to do it again. I kind of want him to no show again. You got to do it again because yeah. then Vince has to blow a gasket. Yeah. His little beady eyes have to go even more strangely red. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But then if that's the case, like if that's happening here, there's no way that he can be tied in with Shane and Kevin. and. No, I know. Yeah, That's another reason that I feel like Daniel's going to be involved. I think they're going to do a triple threat on something. Yeah. So I didn't mean to pull it back to that. It just, it kind of ties in. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. But Um, yeah, I'm. I want to talk about Roman's mic skills. What happened? Where did it come from? He's impressing me lately because he's coming from a place of reality. Yep. They've stopped scripting him like a, a, a WWE superstar, yeah. like your token hero character, and they've started just having him speak like a human being, yep. like the guy he is that's, you know, just one of his, you know, brothers with the Usos, the cousins, and goes out there and just kind of spits attitude and game the way he is. He's the big dog. He knows it. He's cocky. He's he's just kind of controlling his space right now, and I, and yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah, I'm. It's it's surprising. Didn't really know if he had it in him or not. Um, it set up, you know, two weeks ago when he came out and you know, quote unquote, work shoot on Brock, and he's kept it up over the last couple of weeks, and it's actually pretty good. I I like the way he interrupted Kurt. I wish they did it without his music. I would have loved to hear him just all of a sudden pipe up and come running out, sort of thing, but. There's something to be said for when somebody comes out and you just hear like, well, hold it, hold it, hold yeah. it, hold it, because it seems a lot more impromptu. I like that. I, I like, like that, that side of yeah. it, especially because he's supposed to be super angry about it. Like, he, how did he have time to go to Gorilla and be like, hey, can you can you cue up my music real quick? You know what's the only thing that makes that seem actually plausible is we've seen backstage, we've seen what they walk through to get out there. 
So if anything, somebody might just see Roman walking and just be like really quickly type Roman Reigns and hit play because maybe. they're like, uh oh, here comes the big dog. He's <laughs> yeah. mad. Play the music. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, no, uh, John, it was good. John Bradshaw Layfield is backstage, I guess, apparently. Hit his music. Play they've, Roman's theme. They've set this up perfectly to hate Brock and kind of cheer Roman. People are still going to boo Roman just for the sake of booing Roman because that's just what you do. Here's what I'm worried about. Yeah. With all this stuff about Brock Lesnar possibly leaving, mm-hmm. I'm very concerned about a possible WrestleMania 20 situation with Goldberg and Lesnar mm. when everybody booed the shit out of both of them Yeah, because they were both leaving. Nobody cared. People, obviously Roman's still going to be around, but yeah. people are still going to boo Roman Reigns. It's just the thing to do. It's well, what for all sure. the 30 plus year old neckbeards love to do. The hard thing is Les- too- but the Lesnar thing, if he's going to leave... People don't like that stuff either. Yeah, see, and that's that's what I was... I, I just... If he... Everyone knows he's going to leave. So you almost know the result of that match, which building it up this way kind of takes away some of that mystique where it's not going to matter if Roman goes over or how often Brock doesn't show up. Well, it's very predictable. I mean, yeah. this is going to be Roman Reigns' is like sixth coronation. <laughs> Once again, you know, the big dog is finally here. This is the one. This is the one that's going to stick. Roman Reigns is the big dog. Finally. Preview. He's uh, finally going to, you know, climb that mountain and reach the heights of They're Universal finally going to give him that dome. push. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God yeah. Damn it, I, it's your moment, pal. I like, I like what they've done with Roman. It's just... Ugh. I'm I'm afraid for after, and I think it's going to lose the appeal, this match, just because Brock definitely isn't around and won't be around afterwards. There's a there's a chance that Brock re-signs before this Mania. We saw him do it before, I think, WrestleMania 31, the last time these two yep. wrestled. And then they had that stare down where it's, like, who's going to tug who off? He's trying to tug him off! <laughs> You caught me with my mouth full of water there. I, was, <laughs> I almost spit it out. You heard that long pause there. I was watching to make sure Maddie didn't do a spit take. Yeah. No, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, it'll still be a good match. I'm excited for the match. Yeah. I did. Dude, do you remember their first match? Yeah, it was, it was very good, but Brock doesn't seem to be able to do that anymore. Well, it really depends on who he's in there with. He was doing stuff like that with Taker where they were being pretty stiff. Yeah. Um, he obviously did it with Brock or with Braun Strowman, but that was very impromptu. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so but awesome. that match that they had was like a shoot fight. Yeah. They were punching each other in the face really hard. They were kneeing each other and it was like, they just said backstage, you know, just go hard on Let's me. Let's just bitch. do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Let's bitch. just, I don't give a shit about my face. <laughs> uh, it was great. Um, another thing yeah. that I thought was great was Vince McMahon on the microphone. This guy really just, he knew the storyline. Yeah, he knew what he had to say, and he just carried it with all the. I mean, obviously, he's a guy who has to give corporate speeches and addresses and stuff all the time. He's a very prepared speaker. He's been doing <laughs> it for years. Yeah, but sometimes he comes out and it feels like he just kind of is winging it, and it doesn't go very well, and he forgets lines yeah. or he says well. But he he delivered his stuff very well. I thought on Raw, the whole segment was awesome. the The storyline setup has been great. We'll see. We'll see how good the match is. God, what else happened? Oh, let's talk about Braun Strowman. Who? Braun Strowman. Who? Braun Strowman. Oh, Braun Strowman. Got I'm right it. here. Yeah. You son of a bitch. I don't think you're going to like how I feel about this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't I don't like it. Oh, no. I it completely delegitimizes the entire tag division. But who cares? I care because there it's a, it's an actual division with superstars and belts. And now you have one guy, and I get it, it's Braun Strowman. You couldn't do this with anyone, but it's Braun Strowman. And he came out and cleared out an entire division on his own. Of geeks. It, of guys who have been shit on for weeks. But they it shouldn't doesn't matter. Be. The revival is phenomenal. We've seen it in NXT. They could do it on the main card, and it sucks they haven't done it. Yeah, but nobody's going to remember the revival as the team that got tossed over the top rope by Braun Strowman. People are going to remember that Braun Strowman, the monster among men, was somehow... So goddamn alpha that he came out and won 100% of the tag team titles himself. I don't like it. I love it. I I get that he's so so big and strong that he can do whatever he wants and win all the belts in the world. But if he can go out and literally win the tag team belts 
how come he doesn't have all of the belts? <laughs> he should just have all the belts. I don't know. If that was where they were going with it, sure. But this, to me, was just like, our tag division sucks. So we're just going to have one guy come in and just take it all. Well, it does suck right now. I know, but try to make it better. I just do you, do you think there's anything else more entertaining to have the bar involved in at WrestleMania than a handicap match against Braun Strowman? I, That's a WrestleMania moment. No, That's gonna, something we're going to remember for years. I will like the match. I'm not like I'm not saying I won't like the match. I don't like the idea of it and what it does to the division itself. Yeah, I think you're just marking out too hard for them. I don't. Uh, I get the traditionalist thing, but I like get, it's uh, a certain maybe. point. I don't know, man. Like they have to do something, and maybe this is what it is. This I, guy was thrown in a trash compactor. Yeah, and he lived. I called. He could win the tag titles himself. Yeah, and I I called for them to do something with the division because it's been terrible, and maybe this is it. But I, when I said it, I meant give us a good team. <laughs> I have to wonder if they hadn't thought about maybe having the brother Nero thing happen, and then possibly maybe. Jeff Hardy's arrest maybe kind of derailed it a little bit, and then they were like, "Well, we need to do something with Braun. Let's pivot." Yep. But. I would really be surprised if we don't still see Brother Nero involved in the ultimate deletion, which is next week, by the way. That's going to yeah, be awesome. Yeah, which is awesome. And I think, I think uh, I don't think his DWI is going to matter, which it 100% should, should, because we saw the same thing with the Usos two months ago. With Jay, was it Jimmy? Jay? Uh, it was uh, Jay. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that was pretty much. And he out. didn't, he didn't miss TV at all. No. So, I, I can't if see. Anything, they went harder on the jail metaphors. Yeah. <laughs> the next night. Yes. <laughs> and then. Locked down. I should know. And apparently so they already filmed a bit of Brother Nero for the ultimate deletion. Anyway. Yeah, they probably so, shot that whole thing already. Yeah. In this entire well, I think, I think they've already filmed the match. Yeah. Yeah. I think they did it last week. So. Senior Benjamin. Yeah. King Maxwell. Lord Wolfgang. Rebecca. Yeah. Vanguard One. Oh, the Lake of Reincarnation. Hold on. Tell me you saw the little Twitter battle between King Maxwell and... Did you <laughs> no, see it? No, I didn't. Oh, my God. Awesome. <laughs> it was good. Uh, it was good. The kids were tweeting at each other of who was the better wrestler. Of course. And then ultimately Matt bro stepped in and <laughs> it was... Well, King Maxwell is undefeated. Yeah. It's... I, I love... the one and only Drake Maverick. <laughs> That's true. I love that... That Matt Hardy seems to run his own like story <laughs> on social media. Oh, he does. It's so good. It's like <laughs> the world's craziest pulp strange novel that you've ever seen. It's, awesome. it's just sci-fi at all times. It's four million tweets. That's yeah. one of the reasons that my video got so lost in the shuffle. <laughs> yeah. He tweeted it about like, it. We're like, here we go. And then it was already like eight tweets. Deep. Damn <laughs> yeah. it. It was like tweet one of 6,000 that yeah. hour. Um, I really hope WWE don't screw it up. I hope that they allow them to have as much fun as they had in TNA. Yeah. I hope Jeremy Borash is involved. In exactly. fact, his name is the entire reason I came up with that whole song. Yeah. Because <laughs> one day in my car, I was driving. I was like, Jeremy Borash. I was like, oh, that's funny. Yeah. I, I think I'm, uh, fingers crossed, it's as good as we're hoping. I, and I, I hope, so. I hope. Bray loses and becomes part of the whole thing. Yeah, that would be really good for Bray Wyatt. 100%. Honestly, he's got to do something cool. Yeah, that you know the internet geeks like us can latch on to and be like, okay, Bray's doing something fun and yeah. fresh right now, and it's not just Vince McMahon's idea of trying to make a new monster. No, yeah, and like, like let's forget this God stuff. He doesn't have his two big guys to back him up anymore, and he hasn't for a year and a half, almost two years now. So it's time to. It's it's definitely time to do something else with Bray. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did you hear Braun yell, let's go? Oh, yeah. On his way to the ring? Yeah, I feel yeah. like that was a shout out. I, I think see it you, was Braun. too. It I might, see you, buddy. It might have been. I know you. you he's seen you the video. You love the ADCs of wrestling. He's seen the video. Yeah, he's seen it. He's well, listening to the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you might like the intro when you listen back to the show. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I just, I, I popped. He yeah. Came out, he's like, Raw! <laughs> Let's go! You know what I will like, say? That was a reference to me. 1,000%. One, one, one thing I I, I'm not liking about Braun right now is the pandering to the crowd so much. I get he's a face and all that sort of thing, but pointing to the crowd and then pointing to the to the bar and then nodding and stuff like that. I'm like, you're a monster. Dude, like, he's Hogan on. now. Yeah. He's I, Hogan now. Yeah, I don't know. I Maybe I, I don't like that so much. I liked where he was, where he was a face because everyone loved him, but he didn't care. The Stone Cold face, the anti-hero. Yeah, yeah. Where exactly. he was such a badass that I mean, that's what works best, yeah. right? Oh, 100 percent. When people are so badass because they don't give a shit. Yeah. And people are into it. Yeah. They like it. Yeah. Uh, I swear next week he's gonna come out there, brother. He's gonna throw a big boot and drop a big leg <laughs> on the bar. What's he gonna do, Seamus yeah. and Cesaro? 
You look stupid. Oh, you look so stupid. Oh. <laughs> no, he'd always storm off after he talked to me and Gene. <laughs> and me and Gene would be like, Hulk Hogan, what do you have to say to Bobby Heenan? And he'd be like, oh, 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 let me tell you something, me and Gene. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm so angry. Oh. <laughs> And that's what happens when you're not scripted and too high on cocaine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'd just be like close to ripping his shirt off. He's like, leave that for the ring. Oh. <laughs> We're running out of those shirts. Stop <laughs> ripping them. Uh, strong words from the immortal Hulk Hogan back to ringside. Yeah. I don't, do you want to, you know, you kind of brought up a leg drop. Should we talk about Nia a little bit? Sure. Yes. I almost forgot the Alexa Nia storyline. It's interesting. It is interesting. I thought, you know, for a second week in a row, they kind of did something really different on the show. Yep. Which was nice. Um, I enjoyed Alexa playing off Nia again, kind of manipulating her. Again, we're seeing this little Miss Bliss master manipulator saying yep. that she loves Nia, you know, playing that friend card and yep. getting Nia all emotionally involved and saying, oh, I love you too. That was really sweet. And then the camera being left on. How'd you feel about this? Um, I like the idea. Use a security camera filter for crying out loud. Like, don't just make it seem like they're in a studio or something. Well, that part I didn't like. I like the, the idea was that of it was it supposed to be. It was supposed to be an interview, an interview with yeah. Charlie. And I guess the cameras were rolling. Yeah. And somehow in the truck, they're just like, oh, roll with this. This is way yeah. better. I get it. Maybe they just, maybe it just needed to be let on a little bit better. I didn't buy it, which is. I'm whatever, but I don't get it. How are you the mark when you're, you're like <laughs> not buying it and I'm fine with it. It's not that it's not that I didn't buy it. It's just I think I would have preferred it, prefer, preferred it, preferred it to be a little you more preferred per, Yeah, uh, I think it just maybe secured a camera ask or maybe the camera wasn't on. It was a black camera sort of thing, but the mic was on. Right. And it just kind of came over the speakers rather than a yeah. fully HD video that looked produced. Or if the mic was kind of pointed at the ceiling. Yeah, something. You got like a skewed view of it. And, uh, yeah. But the or idea, if somebody played it back for Naya after this, like yeah. Naya goes back and, and maybe Charlie is like, hey, Naya, I just, Did I know this see, isn't my place, yeah. but I really thought I should play this for you because our cameras were rolling before yeah. the interview. And they could have actually shot the interview. And it could have been, which would have been like cool. uh, them kissing Naya's ass, talking about yeah. how awesome she is. And then had the segment after, you know, I did like the uh, attention to detail where before they start talking about Naya, they're like, where's Charlie? Yeah, that chick's always late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, oh, girls, hey, I know we're supposed to do this interview because I'm fucking late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. I, I, I like it. I like that they're doing this. I just hope they don't overdo it and make it, I don't know, borderline too real. I, don't, I if that's even possible, but... Along with, I don't know. with Roman, Nia was one of the very worst talkers on the roster like totally. a year ago. And totally. I, I'm, I'm not going to go so far as to say that she's a great talker now, but she's showing a lot of character and charisma right now, yeah. which is very, very, very nice to see. Which And she's, I mean, she was always super talented and like she's ex-model and all that sort of thing. So she had the chops to she, do she's it. She's got a great look. Yeah. Like she's she's got it. It's just, I, I think the one thing I didn't like about her reaction was like, it was cool that she was in the ring when it started playing. I liked that. Was it too but much? She, she, no, she just started to mope out of the ring rather than like get angry. And she didn't get angry until the top of the ramp. I kind of like it. You could see the exact oh, moment know. where her heart broke. When, <laughs> <laughs> when she when she like was in the room afterwards, she went backstage and was in the room and was screaming. She was like, like at, a, at a 12. I That, to me, I think I would have loved to see her lose her crap in the ring. Right. Uh, that I would have loved. I still liked it. The, the fact that she just ripped the top of the suitcase off, I was just like, damn. Yeah. I I know I can't do that. Imagine if she just went out and like ripped the barricade off. Yeah. Literally Plow ripped herself padding off yeah. the pad of the wall or yeah. ripped the LED board off the side of the ring. That would have been yeah. pretty damn cool. I think, I think her meltdown would no, have more. <laughs> I think her meltdown would have more impact on the fans if she did it in front of them rather than going into the back and right. doing it behind camera. Because her I like scream it. was like guttural and like, right. I was just like, damn, it was damn. like It was kind of like, fire pants! Always. <laughs> <laughs> Which he was wearing them again. Literal shout out. He's listening to the podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah he knows. He's like, these 100%. fire pants are so over. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta wear them every week. <laughs> I know, my fans love fire pants. Yeah. She, so, uh, I, I don't, don't know if that's Seth Rollins or Owen Hart. I can't really tell. Do you like my fire pants? By the way, I am not a nugget. It's kind of a little both. 
<laughs> it's a hybrid. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the best wrestler of all time. Yes. The hybrid of Seth Rollins and Owen Hart. Yeah. Don't do any. Never mind. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah, sorry. That's terrible. I only mention Owen Hart out of love and respect. I miss him. Yes. <laughs> I will kick your leg out of your leg, brother. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, one last thing I wanted to mention about Nia. Has oh, she sure. had more squash matches than oh, anyone else on the entire roster? I don't well, like why do they do it? She's had more than Strowman. I think she's surpassed the Bludgeon Brothers in recent months. Like she is just squashing peeps left, right, center. I mean, I guess they had to give a reason to get her out to the ring. Yeah, why do they keep booking her in these matches? What's I don't the point? Know. It's weird. It seems maybe just to so she can get that win and feel good about herself yeah. again. I don't know. It was also kind of weird when she didn't come out for that match with uh, Asuka, and then Mickey James had to wrestle Asuka. Yeah. That but was the, well, that was because she already had a match. Yeah. That was uh, that was a little forced. Nobody really got what was no. happening. Like, I kind of understood that it was probably supposed to be Nia Jax, yeah. but um, like, I don't know. This I, woman! Yeah. You're going to wrestle <laughs> this woman! <laughs> yeah. Well, who the hell is the fucking woman? <laughs> Who's it going to be? Yeah, after the second time she said, I was like, oh, it's probably supposed to be Nia, but... Yeah. No, they've already done it twice. So it's maybe not they were yet. just like, let's not insult people's intelligence and yeah. we'll explain it later. Yeah. But uh, I have no intelligence to speak of. So <laughs> I was just like, that who's what? What? Who's what? that? Who is that? I don't know who it's supposed to be, Michael. Who's going to be? Well, I think we're done with she the point at the ramp. She says it's going to be a woman. There's no woman there. Who's going to be Maddie? So do we see Mickey James and Nia Jax next week then? Or do we see Nia just attack, like go after I say they're avoiding her all night. And then maybe closer to the go home, she has to destroy Mickey James. She's out back lifting up Elizabeth. I'd like to see Mickey James walking down a ringside with Alexa Bliss with like taped up ribs. Yeah. (laughs) And, uh, you know, kinesio tape on her shoulder and stuff. Just like, well, this is what might happen to you. (laughs) Good luck. Yeah. I want to see a bronze. I I just want to see her flip an ambulance or something. Good luck, biscuit butt. Yeah. (laughs) Um... I guess the one last thing to say, other than Ms. TV, oh yeah, Ms. TV, they need a set. <laughs> it's just those it's chairs. Just a, it's just a carpet and chairs. <laughs> <laughs> like even Dan, Dean Ambrose had a plant for crying out loud. Remember like the Heartbreak <laughs> Hotel, the Barber Shop, maybe all these just, like Piper's Pit. Piper's Pit might not have had much, but maybe they just don't have the time to set it up. I don't. Know. Maybe the Geratron Five Thousand. <laughs> uh, I. I mean, yeah, I guess they need a set, but <laughs> but the the thing with the Miz though is he's kind of his own showman. Like you, you yeah. don't even maybe you don't need it because he's just so good. Yeah, no, that's that's nitpicky. Yeah, um, I don't know if I was feeling the whole dynamic there with the three of them. Obviously, it was Miz trying to play them against each other, but then they did kind of give in and start fighting each other. Yeah, and they made a match out of it, so it almost worked. But the best against part Ballard about his it, blue pants. The best part about it was. He tried to get Seth to do it. Then he tried to get Ballard to, to flop on him. And then he calls him out, which is funny. But then when they finally get in each other's face and Miz is in between them, just like, <laughs> oh my God, are they going to do it? And it's the look on his face, I'm just like, ah, every week Miz reminds me why I absolutely love him. Yeah. Like, Welcome to the most must-see moment of this week's Raw. <laughs> me getting my ass kicked. <laughs> oh, that was like his awesome. I get yeah, it. see? I get it. Yeah, well, then we did get a match between Fire Pants and the Balor Bulge and his Irish potatoes. <laughs> that Balor Bulge is just, ever since we started talking about it, I've noticed it more and more. Two round white potatoes and one fingerling. <laughs> it's too- Make up the sack of potatoes that is the Balor Bulge. It's too much, but not to be super some weird or anything, Finn is in some shape. Like, way oh, more yeah. than he has been in the last few years. Like, he looks n- like old school Prince Devitt type shape. His stomach looks like a bubble jacket. It's insane. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> <laughs> like he could he could keep me warm in the winter anytime. <laughs> you beautiful man. No, uh, he's 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 nuts. But whatever. He can't stop smiling though. Uh, the, I, yeah, and I'm I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm not sure how I feel about it. <laughs> I don't know. Just like, well, I remember when you lost that Universal Title in like one day, and he's like, "Oh, I'm smiling, but it hurts <laughs> deep down." <laughs> You caught me deep. I liked. I did. I'm like in his, a lot of pain emotionally right now. I did like his uh, his promo on set though a little bit about. Uh, I don't know why you think you can win because I beat you last time with one arm. I like that. That was pretty good. With one arm. Yeah. Oh boy. One arm. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But uh, the match and was a bulge. The match was as good as expected for a raw. It was fine. They went you back and take, forth. You, you can't take the cue that all I want to do is just make Balor bulge jokes uh, and I not know. talk about the side. I'm <laughs> trying to move it on a little bit. <laughs> There's no Irish potato famine here. We can only talk about balls so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll make dick jokes all day. I'll make dick jokes all day. What'd you think about how that match ended? So smooth. So smooth. Like two pros, right? Smooth like Finn Balor's lovely, lovely eight pack. I, I love the superplex. <laughs> I think it's a crazy move. to like Just the coordination the two guys have to have to be able to land comfortably and safely together superplex is gorgeous it's, it's, it's always been great it's randy amazing. orton's is the best oh, randy orton's is ridiculous just like his daddy but even yeah, like, like bob orton jr we were expecting um you know seth to get back up there and land the falcon arrow like he does every yes. friggin' time and then for and finn to boom. use that momentum and then Perfect. do the inside cradle and like smoothly too, like he didn't stumble, he didn't accidentally kick his leg out, like it was perfect. That was really good. Obviously, yeah. these guys are supposed to be neck and neck for competition. Yeah. I think this match actually has a chance to of be good being kind of a sneaky sleeper match. Yeah, a little sneaky sleepy match. Sneaky sneak. Yeah, to to steal the show, or at least their, you know, two hour chunk of the <laughs> ten hour extravaganza yeah. to be the best thing you'd seen in the last forty eight hours yeah. of the show. Well, yeah. It's going to be long. How long is this? They keep announcing more and more matches. Well, they I, just announced the the Battle Royal for the women, which, yep. by the way... Oh, yeah, we should I'm, touch on that real we quick. We should definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. going to be the last thing I'm going to touch yeah. on. But um, I'm all for the inclusion. But if we start giving the men and the women the gimmick matches on every show, it's going to really inflate a lot of these cards, especially with the joint pay-per-views. Like, if we always have an Elimination Chamber for both, a Royal Rumble for both, it starts, you know, Money in the Bank for both. Yeah. The Battle Royal for both. I mean, this is a lot of time that you're taking up on the show that could go to other matches that aren't so contrived. Yep. Um, I, I get it. You know, you got to get all the women on the card, I guess. That's their MO nowadays. Yeah. You have to have everybody on the card. We're going to see a ton of NXT women in there, too, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just, but it's I think, not that entertaining. The Battle, I mean, last year was okay with Bron Gronk, I guess. Yeah, but they've got to have that celebrity interference for it to be interesting. But yeah, I think it's meant nothing. I Where's think, Baron Corbin these I days? I think both like, of them, well, in the main event. Yeah, but he's not walking around with sure. the Andre giant statue. And well, by the way, there's going to be a men's one too, right? They yeah. haven't announced it, but and that's that's kind of what I'm getting. Like they're both going to be on the pre-show, right? Like you're not going to have a Dean that's Ambrose true. Intercontinental match. You're not going to have. Well, I guess you're going to have a cruiserweight title match. That's yeah. likely set for the pre-show, and then you'll have the two. Battle Royals, which you've got a two-hour pre-show and then a five-hour main show. So the time is there. I bet that Intercontinental match, sorry, Cruiserweight match will be dope. It'll be so, it'll be great. Remember last year? Cedric's in there. Well, it was, last year it was Aries and Neville, right? Fantastic. That should have been on the main card that for sure. Been. You know what I could see them doing? I could see them doing the men's Andre uh, Battle Royal on the pre-show. Yeah. And then actually having the women's one in the middle of the Mania card. But Just how do you get them all out there? You just trot them down, man. That's how they always do it. I suppose. I, I feel like that's just the, it, the way it works. It just better seems on a like too much to have in a pre-show two big it's battle royals. Yeah. And if it's the first one ever, at least you can talk about it. Yeah. And you can talk about how Moolah with this awful, terrible, sordid Ugh. past is man. somebody that you should honor. Is it? I mean, I guess we're talking about it, so yeah. let's talk about it. The controversy this week, guys, is the announcement of this uh, fabulous Moolah Memorial Battle Royal. If you haven't read about it, I mean, I'm not gonna hear i'm not here to pass judgment or anything i don't know but the I'm popular judging. opinion is that she was not a very nice person based on a lot of the accounts of women that used to work for her she was essentially known as a, a madam who sent the women out to different territories who were taken advantage of in ways both professional and supposedly sexually Shh. by a lot of owners of territories and she just kind of I don't know, treated her women like, I guess, like products. They're they're pumping her as this, and in the ring, sure, I can see what they're doing, but she didn't actually teach these women to wrestle. Wrestle. She taught them to do what we saw in the Attitude Era, bra and panties match, matches. That's what she taught them. Well, this kind of predates that. I think she this took was back when, when, of their when Lady, yeah, she took money from them. Um, that was the contract. That wasn't yeah. actually what she took. She probably took a lot more than that. I don't know if these women were actually speaking like Moolah taught them, like people like Tori Wilson and stuff, but it's it's women that used to work with her back in the territory days in yeah. the 80s and, and maybe early 90s 
when it was still just women's wrestling, like yeah. you know, like you'd see from Alonda Blaze, and when maybe they weren't so, you know, such beautiful young starlets, they were the lady wrestlers out there that were, they were cat fighting. Yeah, like they weren't it, even really wrestling. They were tough chicks, and yeah. It wasn't glow either. It was just, no. it was different in the territories. It, yeah. it was what you saw when you see old clips of Fabulous Mulan. Yeah, Mae exactly. Young, you know what I mean? Exactly. Mulan, her girls were in town and they were going to wrestle and then she would ship some girls off. But the, I don't know. It's it's tough. Like with the Warrior Award, the Warrior was a guy who had a really checkered past. He was a very controversial person. They honored the death of Superfly Jimmy Snuka yeah, which is, when yeah. he was, I mean, pretty much proven to have murdered somebody. Yeah. I, I mean, he was never convicted of it. It seemed like they were getting close to actually bringing up a conviction for him. But um, I don't want to speak for the current women. It's 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 a weird thing. Wrestlers, but if you're one of those women's wrestlers, how can you? And I mean, I I don't know. Maybe a, a lot of this stuff has to be proven for us to even really talk about it like this. But if you're one of those women and you know what that past is like, how can you go on Raw and be so excited about? And talk about her and she built all this up and talk about the yeah, success of the women's totally. division and fabulous mula that and fabulous mula that this i don't i don't know i looking online within like 24 hours the the backlash that this has gotten um i don't know if they can change it at this point i don't know i don't i don't think to. that they will i think they'll ignore it i think that a lot of the mainstream audience that will see this will take it at face value oh yeah. i remember fabulous mula from back in the day and they won't look any deeper but like i said in i mean it's she just, was essentially it is just these girls a, out. Yeah, it is just alleged, but them. it's been written by so many different sources that yeah. it seems like there's some truth to it. Yeah. And when that's the case, it's really tough to immortalize somebody like that yeah. by naming something after them. I mean, Andre the Giant is one thing. Fabulous Moolah, I don't know, maybe name it after somebody else, you know? Yeah. Called the Alundra Blaze Classic or something. Something. And I get it. They want to do it because, you know, she's she's no longer here and that sort of thing. So Yeah, and she's more call classic era. Tori Wilson but or the Trish Stratus or Stratus. What about the Mae Young? Is Mae Young any cleaner? But, but Mae Young could be the one because she, she was more of a character than wrestling. She was the Betty White of wrestling. Yeah. Mae Young was the Betty White of wrestling, Betty. I I, and then I saw some people online saying, oh, they should be called the China Classic and all this. It's like, well, I mean, China didn't exactly have the greatest past, but at least she did that sort of stuff stuff to herself yeah like and that was Ultimate more Warrior. those were more personal problems yeah. those weren't things that she did to other people yeah exactly it's not a, you know a wake of you know gloom and doom in yeah. her i i don't think they're going to do anything with it there is a petition going around that's got like ten thousand signatures on it already to change the name yeah no dq.com started the petition yeah um, so I it'll be interesting it. i didn't sign it i don't really i don't know i mean i'm not here to get all political on it but it's a very interesting topic i would love to know what you guys think i got a few tweets about it thank yeah. you uh i know ramador sent me a tweet he wanted yeah. to ask about it but i was obviously going to bring it up so i didn't want to jump right to it in the uh the two tweet me section uh, just two tweets just two tweets to tweet me bro <laughs> I, I mean i think maybe it's as big of a deal as it is right now because of the times because of the movements and stuff that are going on right now i think that's why it actually does matter and why wwe should actually take a look at it yeah it just it doesn't look great it that's doesn't that's look the good. main point here it just doesn't look if great if the mainstream media picks it up it'll blow up yeah and it'll be huge I mean, and they'll you know you publicly traded it. company we've all yeah. you know heard them say that before it yep. it, it matters yeah you want to be as uh, clean as possible strange um, well, I think that's it. I yeah. think we, we did a solid hour here, at least. Yep. We got to be close. We just keep going too long on these. Yeah. There's too much damn programming these weeks. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God, when and I started this show, I was like, Maddie, we're going to do like 25 minutes, a half an hour every week. I'm JBL in, uh, in real life. <laughs> the problem is we both have opinions and could talk about this crap for you hours. Get out of here with your stupid opinion. We don't even. my yes man, Matty. It's, it's amazing. We don't even like touch on NXT and 205 Live either. Which no, I know. Is, which is kind of Full crazy, disclosure, but. I've barely been watching them because uh, I am uh, with a life. Yep. And uh, it's really tough to do this. And it's I'm a lot on of basically wrestling. no sleep today. It's, yeah. uh, it was going to be a rough one. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, you, but you say that every week. Oh, I'm, no, I'm I'm tired. I'm not into this. And then every week, you just you nail it. Oh, I don't know if I nailed it. I mean, it's just, thank you. Oh, jeez. Well, you're welcome. You know, it's just, you, gotta, <laughs> you know. Tweet the show at ADCs <laughs> of Wrestling. Uh, yeah, next week we're going to do just two tweets. So get your tweets in. Ask us questions. We're going to pick the best two. Yep. Might be the most ridiculous ones. Just saying. If they're ridiculous and funny, there's a great chance they're going to make it. 
best way to would be to hashtag just two tweets. That way I could search for the hashtag. Perfect. And just find the tweets that you guys send me. So tweet us at hashtag just two tweets. Number two. Just yeah. two tweets. Yeah. You know, if you could somehow put the NWO music behind it, <laughs> that'd be great. Or Scott Hall voice. Or yep. G- you know, Scott Hall memes with it, GIFs, whatever, that'd be perfect. Just, GIFs. It's GIF. Aren't they GIFs? No, it's a GIF. GIF? I don't want to get into that right now. Okay. okay. It's a thing with me. It's pronounced GIF. Fair enough. Like giraffe, like gist. It's a thing. Mm, mm. Damn it. Mm. <laughs> you made me angry. What about golf? Yeah, that's a different, that's a hard G. It's oh, a I see. That's oh, a go word. GIF is a G word. Should we move on from this? <laughs> <laughs> it's a sensitive subject with me, Maddie. Yeah, I apologize for bringing it up. <laughs> uh, why don't you bring up your Twitter stuff? Yeah, guys, What's I your asked for bitch? ten, thinking no freaking way, got twelve. I don't. It's kind of crazy. You're like you're just so amazed that people followed you when you're on a podcast that people like. Well, I don't know. Does anyone listen to this podcast? I don't know. This is, there's people. <laughs> there's listeners. I don't have the login information. I don't know. There's, I tell you like every day. Yeah, fair enough. No, I it's uh it's it's pretty fun. It's cool. You can get me at Matt the Markiest. M A R K I E S T. Hit me up. I don't know. Let's go for 15. Why not? You're the worst. Uh, Follow me at Andrew David Cox on Twitter and Instagram and uh, YouTube.com slash Andrew David Cox is probably the best place to go if you want to have a laugh. A good laugh. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bunch of funny stuff on there. More to come. Yeah. Uh, no new parody videos this week, but there will be new stuff from Something to Wrestle, and I will probably post some of the. Uh, this week's show in clip form. If you're listening on YouTube right now, like we said at the top of the show, please go to iTunes, subscribe, rate five stars, tell your friends, spread the word. I know there's about right now five or six hundred people that are, are viewing it on YouTube every week. Yep. I don't know if they're listening to the full show, but if you are, thanks. Yeah. Comment away. Yeah. I guess that's it. We'll see you next week. Ball game. Peace. What the hell, Matt? I've had enough of your shit. Okay, when I say ball game, it's over. You stupid idiot. You just made the list.